Metal in Motion Outdoor Power Equipment Repair. Today I want to show you how to replace the diaphragm in a Pulsa Prime carburetor that's found on your 3 horse to 5 horse Briggs & Stratton motors. If you don't know what a Pulsa Prime carburetor is, they look like this. It's the plastic carburetor that mounts on top of the gas tank. And they have a gasket and a diaphragm located in between the carburetor and the gas tank. And that diaphragm oftentimes gets stiff, gets brittle, and causes hard starting, or when the motor starts, it quickly dies out. One thing to check before we go on is make sure you have no water inside the gas tank. These styles are bad about getting water in through the gas tank cap and down into the tank, and it appears as though you have a carburetor problem when really you simply have water in your gas. So let's go over to the bench. I'm going to show you how to take this off the engine, how to disassemble it, and replace the diaphragm. Okay, first thing that we want to do is remove the bolt holding the air filter on. Just takes a flat tip screwdriver. When we got that loose, we'll just pull the air filter directly off the top of it. Now, what we're looking at here, we have some linkage that we're looking at. I'll zoom in on this linkage just to show you guys. We have a spring right here. This is our governor spring. And that governor spring attaches to this little coily linkage and that coily linkage goes over to this little wind vane. That wind vane uh, blows uh, with the wind off the flywheel when the motor's going and it kind of acts as a governor to keep the speed going uh, very consistent. Uh, when we take the carburetor and the tank off, that spring and that linkage and everything will stay as one unit so you don't have to worry about taking any of these springs off. What we will have to take off is this half inch screw here, or a bolt, and we have a 3 8 over here. Sometimes this is a 7 16 sometimes this 3 8 is a 7 16 as well, so just varies depending on what year and model you have. One thing to mention, right in behind here, there's a spacer right here. Now this one has a strap right here that is holding the spacer in. On some of the older models, they don't have that strap, so when you pull this bolt out, that spacer is going to fall out. You just want to make sure you don't lose that spacer so that you can put it back in there. And I'm going to take the half inch, go ahead and loosen this one up. Now my spacer is just hanging in there with the little bracket that it has. I'm going to take my 3 8 out. Now when I've got these bolts taken out now, this whole thing is loose, uh, I'm going to pull it straight out from the motor. That's going to take it off of the intake manifold, but I'm still attached to the linkage right here. Okay, This linkage has a Z-bend in it, so in order to take it off, I've pulled the carburetor and the gas tank out from the engine, so I'm off of the intake manifold right here. I'm going to tilt this tank vertical as I hold that linkage. Tilt it vertical, and then pull out, and it comes right off. You can see the little Z-bend in that, so I need to work around that, that little Z-bend. Um, I want to also go ahead and take off my O-ring. This uh, is supposed to say snapped into the carburetor, but sometimes they come off. Um, you have an O-ring, and you have a little plastic clip that holds the O-ring into the carburetor. Okay, so now we're looking at the carburetor. Uh, it's attached to the top of the uh, gas tank. Now we're going to remove the little boot little rubber boot and set it aside. You also have a gasket on top of the carburetor that we want to remove. Set that aside. In order to remove the carburetor from the gas tank, we have three screws holding it on one side and two screws holding it on the other. They're simply Phillips head screws, so we're going to use a Phillips screw, uh, screwdriver to take them off. Okay, now the next step is just to simply lift the carburetor up. All these screws are the same length, so if one falls out, it doesn't have to go right back in the same hole. We're going to lift this up. Now sometimes this might be stuck because there's a gasket in between the carburetor and the tank, and it, sometimes it dries to uh, one or the other, and you've got to just kind of pull it off. But just uh, try to be gentle. Try not to tear it. Okay, this one has stayed on the tank. You can see that there's a long yellow stem. 
that stem comes right out of the tank. Okay, so now we're looking at the bottom of the carburetor here. One thing you don't want to lose is this little spring right there. Sometimes that spring will come off and you want to just uh, make sure that spring doesn't get lost. So all my bolts are still in it, so I'm just going to pull my bolts out. That way I don't lose any on the ground. Okay, we've got two screens on here. We've got a little screen here, and we've got this silver screen here. The silver screen, if you turn it, you can work it back and forth, it'll come right off. We want to make sure that screen is good and clear, uh, good and clean, and uh, maybe blow through it uh, with an air compressor, maybe score some carb cleaner on it just to make sure there's no uh, junk in it. This one here, usually I just hit this with an air compressor. You don't want to like blow 110 PSI at it, but I usually just blow it real gentle and uh, make sure there's no crud on the top of it. And then I'll clean it off and I'll blow on it with my mouth. Mouth to make sure that I can blow through it very easy and that will tell me that uh, that it's good and clean up on the inside that I don't have any anything blocking it up and through here so I'm gonna blow this off with the air compressor Okay, next I'm going to go ahead and blow through this with my mouth. Like I said, you can put a paper towel over it or something. Um, I just want to make sure that it's good and clean. So this is looking really clean right now. I'm going to put the little screen back on. And uh, I'm going to set this aside. This looks, uh, visually inspecting it, looks fine. The next thing that I want to inspect is the gaskets. Now, when you take these gaskets off, usually these gaskets are stuck together as one and you won't really be able to tell that they're two separate gaskets. They'll appear to be one. So when you take this off, again, you just don't want to lose uh, the spring um, out of the carburetor. The second thing is you want to remember which way this came off, because if you come off and you just pull these things apart, which one went down first, the gasket or the diaphragm? So you want to be aware of that. If you have to take a picture of it, draw it on a sheet of paper, whatever you got to do, just don't forget which way that came down. And in looking at this, these will get very stiff. This little um, pumping section through here, this will get stiff. These little flapper valves, they act as little check valves. I don't know if you can see. See that there? Those little check valves seal against certain holes on the gas tank, and they act as one-way valves. Something can come out of one, but it won't go back because the little valve will seal the hole off. Um, this actually, visually inspecting it, looks fine. I'm going to go ahead and put it back on, and uh, that way you guys can just see how uh, everything goes on the reassembly. If you, the next thing I want to look at is the gas tank. Now you can see here, I'm going to zoom this in a little bit. The gas tank has a couple little holding areas in it. It's got this, this deep bowl in here, and you can kind of see that there's a little bit of crud down inside that bowl. You want to make sure all that crud is cleaned out, because if there gets too much crud in there, that's going to plug up the screen on the carburetor and uh, potentially suck that into your car, into in through your carburetor into the motor. But uh, mostly, it's just going to plug up the carburetor. Uh, you want to make sure this little holding area here is clean. And while you're at it, you can shine a flashlight down this hole here and make sure your gas tank is clean. These carburetors are real bad about getting water inside the gas tank because of the way the gas cap is. It'll rain. Water will go directly into this gas cap. It'll fill your tank up. And when you go to start it, it will seem as though you have carburetor problems. And so you'll go, oh, I need to replace my gasket. First, make sure that your gas is fresh and that there's no water down inside the gas tank. So I'm going to blow this section off. Just make sure this is good and clean. Um, you can use carb cleaner. Spray down inside there and clean that out. Uh, but this looks pretty dry, so I'm just going to hit it with the air compressor. One thing to note, when you hit this with the air compressor, air blows down and through here, it will, blow it will blow gas out these holes. So you want to wear some safety glasses, uh, that way you don't get any gasoline in your eyes. Okay, so that's all nice and clean, and I think everything's looking pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and reassemble it, and we'll go from there.
Got my carburetor here. I'm going to stick the gasket on first. Gasket will go down first. I'm then going to stick my diaphragm. Figure out which way it goes. Now, I have this spring right here. This spring is pushing up on the diaphragm, and so it's wanting to put a big old bow in it. So what I usually do is take a couple of screws, the ones that I pulled out, stick one on the corners, stick it all the way through the gasket, just like that. I'll stick one on this side here as well. That just kind of holds it down. I'll flip it upside down and remount it back on the tank. Now when I set this down, I just want to make sure I don't get any wrinkles, any bends. I don't want the corners folded over uh, when I go to stick it in. I want to make sure that it lays down real nice and flat, just like that. I'm going to reassemble the bolts and then we'll stick it back on the engine. Okay, so now we're ready to reassemble it on the engine. Uh, before I go any further, I do need to stick my O-ring back on the uh, inside of the back of the carburetor. I'll push the O-ring in there, make sure it's clean, if it doesn't have any dirt or anything on it. Place the O-ring in there. Take the little plastic ring and just snap it in. So now we've got our gas tank, we're ready to install it back on. I'm going to take hold of the linkage. I'm going to tilt the carburetor up on its end, up vertically, hook the Z-bend inside of the uh, throttle of the carburetor, and then I'm going to bring the carburetor flat, and uh, that hooks it in. Push the carburetor back on to the intake manifold here, and uh, it'll kind of hold itself there. I'm going to reinstall my boot here. What I usually do is I'll pinch it like this, and slide it on both of them simultaneously. Put my air filter gasket back on and then since my spacer did not fall out when I um, took it apart all I have to do is reinsert my bolt Now, instead of torquing both of these bolts down, or instead of torquing this one down first, I get it started, then I come and I add my 3 8 bolt here, because it still allows a little, bit of, um, a little bit of movement in the tank to line up my hole here on the end. Once I get that one started, I'll go ahead and tighten my 3 8 bolt first. Now I'll finish tightening up the half inch bolt. I'll reassemble the air filter. And that's it. That's how you replace the diaphragm on a Pulsa Prime carburetor for Briggs & Stratton 3 horse to 5 horsepower engines. If you have any questions, feel free to leave it in the comments below, or you can email me at josh at metalinmotionshop.com. So I'm Josh with Metal In Motion Outdoor Power Equipment Repair. Take care and have a great day.